Let's start by putting things into context for IoT. At the moment there are about 10 million IoT devices in use. These are predominantly domestic devices, but more and more are business devices being deployed. By the end of the year, Gartner predicts that 20 billion devices will be deployed. This shows that IoT is real. It's here, it's happening. It still has a long way to go to meet the aspirations that some are talking about, but fundamentally what we are not talking about is pie-in-the-sky technology. IoT has become one of those catchwords. So what I would like to do is look at what IoT means for you. Then we're going to look at the network architecture of IoT. How are these devices working over networks? What networks they are using and how does it all plumb together? How do we secure these networks? And finally, do the current technologies available actually support the aspirations of IoT technologies? Let's have a look at some examples. To put things into context when we talk about IoT, lots of things come to mind. Possibly one of the most obvious would be Ring. You have a basic device in your house, a doorbell, and you can access that device on your mobile via the internet. A very basic application using very basic connectivity to get a device to offer a single service. Taking this up a little further, Hive can control your heating and lighting at home. You're now moving the logic and control down to the local network at your home. This requires a hub in your home. This needs to use a local network, so you have local network requirements there. For example, Wi-Fi. You then need to connect via the internet to the orchestration platform. Then in turn, back to the application on your mobile phone. So we can see the network requirements are getting a little more complex. Taking that up a level again, we can look at how IoT can be used in business. Logistics companies such as DPD can, use, can now start to use IoT to track their trucks and their parcels and provide real-time information back to the end user and the back office business. What we are now starting to do is replace manual business processes. So now there is no requirement for an end user to call a contact center to find out where a parcel is. That information is delivered directly to an app with no manual interaction. Taking a familiar example, we can look at Uber. When we talk about removing backend processing, with Uber, there is now no manual backend process. There's no one sitting in an office taking bookings, finding out where the taxis are and matching these up. All of these processes are actually removed as the customer can now find the taxi themselves and complete the booking via the app. In terms of demands from connectivity, it's still very low bandwidth, so coverage is the most important factor now. But there is also massive scale to consider. Factory monitoring has been around for years, but what you typically have is proprietary sensors sending information to proprietary back-end back systems. IoT lets you standardise that into a single portal, giving you a cohesive view of the factory. But that's not the end. You can now start to analyse that information integrate it with logistics and stock control to give you full visibility of the supply chain. This is all achievable now and the network demands are still relatively low. When we start looking at the aspirations of what IoT could potentially deliver, we can use the driverless cars as an example. Cars on the road are making decisions based on their own sensors. What they need to do is to take this to next level is to start to interact proactively with the environment and other cars. And this is where connectivity really starts to become a challenge. So, at Spitfire we're a connectivity company. We look at every application and consider what is actually need, it needs from the network. We have a methodology that analyzes the application in great detail and looks at protocols, bandwidths, performance requirements, etc. And we apply the same methodology to IoT to ensure the entire IoT ecosystem's network requirements are also met. So I mentioned the IoT ecosystem, and this ecosystem consists of four pillars, or four aspects of the system. On the left-hand side you have the things. Machines, computers, sensors. Typically collecting data and feeding information into the ecosystem and potentially responding to it too. 
The third block is the platform, which gathers and stores all of the data and orchestrates the processes, such as validation, authentication, and data storage and processing. The things have to send data to the platform, and this is where the gateway and connectivity sits. So we're going to focus on this aspect to understand what networks we need to use to connect the things into the gateways and in turn into the platform. A couple of key points then. Firstly, every IoT solution has different needs. And secondly, we need to consider the, how the changing these networks is going to impact the security architecture. So let's look at the architecture of some of the ecosystems I've already mentioned, and let's start with Hive. On the left-hand side, we have a local area network, a home network. It's Wi-Fi enabled, and the devices are talking to a local hub using standard Wi-Fi technology, or indeed Cat5. The devices are collecting small amounts of sensor data and responding to basic instructions. So we're not talking about data that's going to either be bandwidth or latency dependent. The amount of data transfer required to turn on a light is minute, for example. The information these sensors collect is then collated and transmitted to the platform, and once processed, data is returned. This small amount of data is easily delivered over standard broadband circuits. On the right-hand side, we have the user application device, i.e. the mobile or tablet that someone is using to control their home devices. Again, this is likely to be HTTP-based communication delivered to an app over the internet, so it will work quite happily over a 3G, 4G signal or a Wi-Fi network. Again, the application demands for connectivity are very basic. There's very little bandwidth required, and it's no real issue if it takes 10 seconds to turn a light on or off, so latency isn't really an issue either. On the top side of the diagram, we do however, have to consider whether we have enough connectivity into the platform to manage scaling the service up to, let's say, tens of thousands of devices or even more. If you extend this up to, let's say, Uber levels, where coverage is global and millions of device transactions are occurring every minute, we now have to look at a distributed platform. And in turn, this drives its own connectivity challenges ensuring we have enough connectivity to ensure that distributed platform functions effectively. At the bottom end, we now introduce a network requirement into this ecosystem, coverage. If I try to hail an Uber cab in the middle of the countryside, I may see there are none available. What I don't know is whether this means that there are no cars in the area, or indeed that they're in the area, but don't have sufficient signal to let the platform know where they are. So we can ask, is this lack of coverage limiting the expansion of Uber into areas of poor coverage? Looking back at the factory. So this could be a factory campus spread over multiple buildings on a business park, or indeed different locations, connecting via wide area networks such as an MPLS. If I deploy the IoT ecosystem within that infrastructure, I'm likely to have everything I need as the local and wide area networks are likely to be gigabit speed, uncontended, managed and monitored. So the back end is taken care of. So I now have to focus on how I connect all of my devices to the network over potentially square miles. Do I want to attach a Cat5 cable to every device? Well that might be fine for some machines, but how do I do that with a forklift truck? <laughs> They may be Wi-Fi enabled, but how well will that Wi-Fi work in a warehouse full of metal racking? What if my campus is distributed across an airfield where Wi-Fi doesn't have the range and I cannot lay cables? So we've now started adding further demands onto the network. Going back to autonomous cars. A car drives at 70 miles an hour, miles an hour so it covers 31 meters in a second at that speed. Let's say we want that car to utilize messages from a lorry that says I'm overtaking. If we use 4G as the connectivity mechanism, that message could take half a second, maybe a second to get back to my car. And in the meantime, I've passed or driven into the lorry I'm trying to communicate with. So here's the challenge. The application in this case has introduced critical demands on the network. And in this requirement, there are three critical demands. The example highlights that some of the aspirational demands of IoT solutions are extremely low latency. 
round trip latency of single figures to 10 milli 10 seconds single figures to 10 milliseconds are the most current connectivity technologies simply don't offer these speeds the connection also has to be consistent if I send a question to another car I need the response in milliseconds and it has to always be consistently received as these are critical communications we can't rely on high nines reliability we need to be looking at 100% no errors we also introduce security complexity so let me ask a question if I'm driving along and my car gets a message from the neighboring lane do I trust it I'm not going to answer the question but how can we authenticate the message and ensure we trust it let's say the, cal the calibration of that car is five meters out and my car responds accordingly that could be painful so let's look at technologies that are up and coming and how can we address these IoT challenges and use these up-and-coming technologies to deliver the aspirations so let's start with 5G 5G will provide significant latency improvements sub 10 milliseconds latency bandwidth can theoretically be up to two and a half gig but realistically is going to be sub 5 meg sorry 500 meg density is also key as everything becomes an IoT device, the 5G mask is going to need to cater for the massive increases in devices, and 5G can support this. However, 5G offers poor penetration into buildings, so 5G cells are going to have to be everywhere. Every lamppost, bus stop, high rise, and internal repeaters are going to have to be used to give the coverage and speeds people are hoping for. Someone's going to need to make that investment. So what other technologies are there? Let's look at LoRa, and LoRa is effectively long-range Wi-Fi. It utilizes a very long wavelength, so you can kind of think as long-wave radio versus medium wave. If we look at comparing Wi-Fi to LoRa, Wi-Fi will be effective up to about 150 meters and deliver up to 500, maybe 600 megabits. In comparison, if we look at 4G, this can be effective to two kilometers, so we're improving the distance from the mast but the speeds drop to about 50 meg. Okay. LoRa, however, can operate effectively up to about 10 kilometers. However, the trade-off is that it's only going to give you 50 kilobit bandwidth. So it's hardly going to be suitable for streaming YouTube, but it's perfect for IoT sensors. Even better, LoRa is extremely low power. So we're seeing battery life in devices measured in years, not hours or days. So ideal for remote sensors. So if you're running, let's say, a nearshore wind farm, why not use LoRa-based connections? Then we can look at satellites. So if we look at typical geospatial satellites, they're hovering at around 36 kilometers above the Earth. And this gives us a theoretical minimum latency of 230 milliseconds. But by the time you add further network hops to that, you would be looking at near a half a second. So various companies are sending up hundreds of LEO satellites, so these are low Earth orbit satellites. These are hovering around at about 1.2 kilometers, and what that means is that we can actually get true latency figures in the 25 to 50 millisecond range, and gigabit speed. So far we've looked at the challenge of reducing latency with effective connectivity. The challenge being to manage the latency between the device and the platform. But why not use edge computing to distribute the platform towards the devices? Now what we're seeing is that data centers are becoming network hubs where 5G networks terminate directly into the data center. And this offers computing next to the mast and therefore closer to the device. And this is going to become more and more prevalent. So moving on to security another growing market. This is estimated to be over three billion dollars within about 18 months time. However, we have some challenges. According to surveys for 2018, nearly all transactions were unencrypted. Out of reported data breaches in 2018, about a quarter were through a IoT device. And when it comes to passwords, a quarter were either default passwords or either searchable, easily searchable passwords or easily guessed. Okay. 
So the industry's got to do something about this. What we can't do is just use firewalls. So while, while the firewall will secure the back-end infrastructure, when your IoT device is a basic sensor with minimal computing capability, you can't really run a firewall service effectively on that device. So go back to my earlier question. Should I trust the message from the other car? We clearly need advances in technology to secure this machine-to-machine -machine interaction effectively. So just to summarize, whenever designing or deploying an IoT ecosystem, really look at what the network requirements are. Typically, this isn't going to be about bandwidth. IoT is more dependent on latency or quality of connectivity. So you need to look at what SLA is provided with the solution. For example, 5G will enable network providers to deliver tiered services. So as a premium business customer, my service may in future be prioritized over a residential media streamer. Obviously, they'd be paying less. A lot of IoT can be deployed using appropriate existing technology. However, when we get to the more cutting edge aspirations, the IoT application may well be driving the uptake of new technology.